Well, good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back to Fat Cat Collections. And today I want to share with you guys my experience with uh, my most recent purchase, my hot tub. And uh, one thing when I made this purchase, I was, you know, I didn't want to spend a lot of money. Um, I've been looking at getting a hot tub for several years, and about four years ago they had a great deal at Costco, and I didn't take advantage of it, and been waiting patiently for them to have a great sale. And uh, recently, my coworker he said, "Hey, they have a hot tub, thousand dollars off. Check it out." And so I ended up getting this one here. And this is made by a company called Aquaterra. Um, it's sold through Costco.com. And this one, unfortunately, is not available anymore. It sold out. It sold out very quickly. And it was $1,000 off. And I got this thing for about $2,200, $2,000 out the door. Uh, again, with tax, it came to about $2,200. Shipped, of course. Um, and I wanted to make a video to share with you guys because there's not a lot of information on the Internet, surprisingly, about what to expect when you order a hot tub. Here's some YouTube videos out there, uh, you know, showing you, uh, you know, how to install the hot tub or some guys deliver them. But my experience is um, with this is, I mean, no, I've never actually seen or known anybody who's ordered a hot tub from a big box store. Most time they order them from the smaller mom and pop shops. And there is something to be said when you order a hot tub from a smaller mom and pop shop. You have a little more of that, I guess that um, any questions can be answered. You have a little more of that personal uh, service that you get with a smaller mom and pop hot tub store. Um, the only problem with that is a lot of times you're going to pay a lot more from. Um, you'll never get something like this through a mom and pop store for two grand. It's just impossible. And I didn't really want to spend, you know, five, six. These are like buying a car nowadays. I didn't want to spend six thousand dollars on a hot tub. I wanted it to be within my budget. About two thousand dollars is what I thought. Uh, again, for for what I for the amount of I'm going to be using it, and for you know how important I thought it was, I didn't really want to spend more than that. At one point, I maybe would have spent three, but the deal was there. This was regular three grand. And it was a thousand dollars off. And again, this is made by Aquaterra. This is called the Adriana. Um, it's a rectangular tub. It has about 20, I think 20 jets. Um, you know, it's a, it's a basic entry-level hot tub. Um, it is plug-and-play, and, play, and uh, I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the delivery, what to expect. So when you order it, uh, if you're interested in ordering a hot tub online, whether it be through eBay or you order it through um, you know, Home Depot or Lowe's, basically I, I assume you're probably going to get the same experience ordering one through any big box store. Um, again, I ordered mine through Costco. So here's what to expect if you get a hot tub from Costco. Uh, once you make your purchase, uh, they won't actually bill your credit card until the actual hot tub ships. That usually takes about three weeks, two to three weeks to get it to ship. Was it two? Sorry, two weeks before it ships. Um, in my case, it ended up in from it came from San Diego and then ultimately to my destination. Um, what will happen is once the hot tub ships, you'll be emailed um, uh, to set up a delivery time. So it's real simple. You basically just look at the calendar they send you. Confirm with your uh, your order number, and that's it. Uh, and I you have a 12-hour window, so I had to be home between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Uh, you have to sign for it, and the delivery is curbside. And so that really concerned me because where I live, we have the rounded kind of curbs, and uh, it's a little bit of a hump to get it in the driveway. And my street and driveway have an incline, so I was really nervous about this thing. How is, how am I going to be able to get this thing into my like driveway area and once I get near the garage I was home free but that was a real concern because this thing weighs and this is not a big hot tub it's 512 pounds uh, with the pallet it's your pallet weight uh, so uh, at least my parents were nervous about it I was nervous about it and I'm really glad it just worked out so again once you set up that delivery time um, the driver called me uh, and I assume that's probably something that will happen if you order one through Costco as well the country, they, the, the company they contract with to deliver the hot tub basically will call you when they're about 15 minutes out. In my case, um, they got here around 11.30, uh, I think it was 11, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, about 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. Um, so once they call you, they basically will, you know, and I was really concerned with, you know, what kind of truck are they going to have? Are they going to be able to get up my street? Is this going to be a semi truck? You know, are they even going to be able to deliver it on my street? Uh, fortunately, it was a box truck, not a um, semi truck, not a smaller box truck, but like your, I'd say your your mid sized box truck. Um, you know, they have the box trucks you'll see like from um, you, know, you can rent from um, uh, U-Haul and places like that. It's more the larger one, so uh, plenty of room to turn around the street, no issues whatsoever. It's what you probably find if you see a lot of the Lowe's trucks driving around, something equivalent to that size. So you're not gonna have a big semi truck trying to make it up your street. So that was that was nice to not see that thing. Uh, I was expecting a semi truck, so I was a little concerned with that. Um, and again, the other thing I was concerned with again is is the getting it from the driveway. And your situation may be different. You have may have a situation where you can just wheel it right into your driveway, no humps, no bumps, completely flat. But in my case, it was a little bit concerning. Uh, so, luckily, 
I had read online some guys that said, hey, keep keep some money in your pocket. Uh, a lot of these guys, they're not going to bring it into your driveway or garage for you. They're not going to carry it anywhere. Uh, but, you know, because they're not, you know, their specific instructions are to drop it curbside and they don't want to, you know, risk getting hurt to try to move something like this. Uh, you know, when they take it out of the truck, uh, they basically have a lift gate on the back of the truck. So I was thinking they were going to have maybe like a forklift with the big rubber tires and maybe they could just you know, drive that right up the driveway. Well, when I see them open up the truck, they basically had a pallet jack and a, uh, a hand truck. And the hand truck was just enough to lift it up to get, you know, their hands under it and kind of move it around a little bit. And the pallet jack, unfortunately, that thing's really low profile. That would never have made it up the driveway with the hump. And so, uh, again, really concerning. So they moved it onto the lift gate. And I got to tell you, it was a little nerve wracking watching them do it because they get it on this lift gate that was a rather small lift gate and it has kind of an angle. So the thing's kind of leaning towards the back of the, back of the street. And so there were two really big guys. Um, they were able to get the pallet on the back of that lift gate, lower it down. And I had two, and so what I recommend, if you get one, get yourself two um, um, furniture dollies. You can get them through um, uh, Harbor Freight. You can get them in a lot of places. Harbor Freight has them really cheap. And basically what they did is they lowered that gate down and we got those uh, furniture dollies right near the edge of the gate and then we slid it right over the three of us onto the, the, um, onto the uh, furniture dollies. Um, to my surprise, they were nice enough to say, hey, you know, let's wheel it right up the driveway. Now I already had cash in my pocket and I could have saved myself 40 bucks, but I think it was just so nice of them, uh, just the, the level of professionalism these guys um, uh, came with, just nice enough to just see that we didn't have many people here to help and just the fact they were able to wheel that right up the driveway, right from my garage and get it off the, um, actually I was able to get it off the furniture dollies by myself. Once it was in front of the garage, piece of cake. So I gave the guys $40 tip and it saved me a hassle and the worry of having to get this thing up my driveway. For you, depending on where you live, I think that if you have any kind of rounded curbs, even if you have a completely flat driveway, it's worth it to keep a little extra money in your pocket and if they don't offer it, just ask them. Um, and you know, depending on, you know, I figured $40 was nothing for just them to move it. It was a quick $40 to them. Uh, now, if they had to move it somewhere a really long distance or, or something that was going to be a lot more difficult, I probably would have had 100 bucks in my pocket to give them. So that's up to your discretion, but definitely have some cash on you. If they want to put it curbside and all you got to do is get it close to that garage or somewhere where it's out of the street, um, it, it, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it to do that. So once we got it up there uh, to the front of the garage, I'm going to show you that where, where it came from right now. So let's go ahead and take a look there. So we'll just go out and then we'll show you the hot tub in a second here. Just gonna go inside here. And so here is my garage, of course. And there is my driveway. You see there's quite an incline there. And so they were able to wheel it up here, the three of us, right here where my car is at. Completely flat, right to the garage. I got it off the furniture dollies. These are the dollies I used. This is the pallet it's gonna come on, something like this. Might be a little different for you, but uh, to my surprise, and thankfully, uh, the hot tub was on end. I thought it was going to be flat, but it was actually on end, which was good. See, I didn't know what to expect here. And these are the furniture dollies I have. Just a couple of these. Nothing fancy. Get them anywhere, really. And this is the door I had to get it in. So I had all the cars out of the way. Um, I basically had gotten the hot tub in the garage on the pallet jack, or on the, on the uh, furniture dollies. I cut all the... Um, I know, actually, I'm sorry. I kept... I cut these stairs off and they were kind of strapped in with a bunch of cellophane. I cut uh, the cover off, I cut the stairs off and just got it where I could get it uh, by myself on the wheels right through this door. So it made it really easy once we got it back here. Uh, once we got it back here, I unwrapped it and got it into position. And so let's check it out actually. So here it is here. It's a basic tub. I mean, I shouldn't say basic. It's a great tub. I love it. Uh, it's warming up right now. You have your control panel. It has a waterfall which you can change the uh, vary the speed, of course. Right now it's in heating mode, and how this works is, um, and here's, let me show you the stairs too. Came with the stairs, I mean, for two grand, it was just a great deal. Um, only thing I thought was gonna come with the hinge, or this thing will actually, the cover will actually uh, be on the hinge. Probably something you can buy. The one I looked at uh, in the picture had this attached to it. It's probably something I'll buy at a later date, so it makes it really easy to open it and store the cover right in the back, and it just hinges right over. So I will add that at a later date. Um, it has a drink holder right here for more drinks. This is your filter section right here, your filter. That's your uh, skimmer, and um, underneath that is a filter. 
And that's about it. There's an LED light, which you can't really see now because it's the middle of the day. And of course, um, you have your air not, your air control right here for letting more air into the jets. I'll leave it on full. Uh, basic control panel, heat up and down. Uh, and also a uh, LCD display there just showing you the temperature and the function mode, your, your light, and of course your jets. Let me just turn that on real quick here. I'm sure what it looks like. You know, you can spend a lot of money for a hot tub. I was really happy with the price. And I haven't even been able to use it yet because I'm still teeing up. So let me just turn that off now. Okay, so one thing um, with this particular hot tub, I wanted something like this that was going to be plug and play. We can get it down for a second here. All right, there we go. So I wanted something that's going to be plug and play because I didn't want to have to right off the bat hire an electrician to come in. And if you're going to have a 220 line put in, it's going to cost you if you have an electrician do it almost 1,500 bucks. And so at some point, I'm not an electrician. Uh, you do require a permit for that. At some time later on down the road, I will probably have that uh, have that done, have the hot tub converted. But again, it depends on how efficient it is. Um, the advantage of having it on a 220 is the fact that. Um, It'll run 4,000 watts, it's gonna heat a lot quicker, and it's able to heat while the jets are running at full capacity. Uh, whereas right now when I just turn those on, the heater shuts off. Uh, right now when it's in this mode right here, the heating mode, it's heating up the water, it's uh, getting to temperature, which I have it set at 102 right now. So it's taken over, let's see, I filled it up yesterday around 3 p.m. So we're getting close to 24 hours. It's gonna take you over 24 hours to get up to temperature. Um, and that's, I mean, right now it's about 65 degrees where I live. And so it's it's definitely, the 110 definitely isn't as efficient. Now the nice thing about 110 is plug and play. It has a GFCI. It comes with a 15 foot power cord. And I'm just gonna show you this real quick here. And this is what you're not supposed to do, but I feel confident it's just a recommendation. Uh, this is the plug it comes on. So you have a GFCI, which is a ground fault current interrupter. And I have it plugged to an extension cord. They say do not plug this into an extension cord. But to me, um, I just don't see uh, what, they say you can damage the tub, but I just think it's just a recommendation uh, because let's face it, if it's plugged into the wall or plugged into that, as long as you're using a heavy duty power cord, there really isn't much of a difference. I felt the plug for heat, it's not getting warm. But one thing you have to know is when you plug this in, it needs to be a dedicated uh, 15 amp breaker. Um, I had a 20 amp in the garage, which is for a central back system I don't use anymore. I haven't used it since I bought the place, and so I'm able to plug directly into that. Now this is temporary to get it up to speed, up to temperature here. Um, what I'm going to do is once or tomorrow is over after I, I work tomorrow. So after I'm off work, I'm going to start to look at um, getting the wire, getting the cord through the wall into the garage to be plugged in. Uh, now to uh, to code, you have to have the plug. A certain distance from the hot tub. In my case, I'm going to have it separated through a wall. So I'm going to run the cord right through the wall, seal it up, and plug it directly in the garage. Um, technically, you're also supposed to have the power cord within sight of the hot tub. Uh, mine's going to be right through the inside of the garage there. So you can kind of do what you want to do, depending, you know, depending on what you feel comfortable with. Um, eventually, I, I may put a box in over here. I haven't really decided yet, but it's just temporary to get it set up and heat it up to temperature. Um, so that's really about it. That's what you can expect if you get a hot tub from a big box store. Um, this particular one, uh, the power cord, again, 15 feet, you pull it right out the bottom. Uh, there's an access panel right here where you actually have a drain. Um, if you want to drain the hot tub or, you know, if you're not going to use it during the winter, uh, it's really easy to drain. You hook a garden hose up to it and you can run it wherever you need to run it. Um, that's about it. I'm, i got to tell you, I'm really happy with it. I uh, haven't had a chance again to use it yet, but I love the way it looks in the backyard. I had the lights on last night. All these string lights I have uh, set up here in the hot tub with the blue glowing light. It looked absolutely awesome. And uh, I'll definitely come back and re-review the hot tub specifically after I had a chance to use it. But that's just, I wanted to make this video uh, just to let you guys know what to expect because I had no idea what the heck was even going to happen uh, when they delivered this thing. So, um, man, I guess I just want to thank Costco and the delivery service that they use uh, for... Uh, for uh, just making this really seamless. And the guys, I mean, is, I mean, you may not have the same experience, but like I said, uh, if you have any kind of situation where you're trying to do this by yourself, you don't have a bunch of guys to help you, uh, it's really nice that you were able to wheel that right at the driveway uh, where I didn't have to worry about it. So uh, that's what to expect. You order it, you're gonna schedule time. It's gonna take about four weeks to get it. Depending on when you schedule the time, I probably could have had it a week prior, but I wanted to wait till the weekend where I did it, I was completely off. And uh, I was prepared in case I needed to call a coworker or somebody to come and help me. But like I said, it was nice that the uh, delivery guys were nice enough to wheel that right up there. And after that, um, you know, I'm not 
you know, a, a super strong guy by any means. I'm a pretty small guy. Uh, but uh, the only issue I had was when I got it back here, uh, I was concerned with the pavers. Uh, this patio has been here since 05. I put this in. And uh, what I did is I soaked the patio down really well, get all that sand all wet. And then I put the hot tub down. This way, once it was filling, hopefully it start to level out some of those pavers. Um, another thing I want to mention, too, I was really concerned with, you know, how perfect does the surface have to be. Um, just to give you an example, if we look at my other patio, and this unfortunately has been years of settling, and uh, I didn't use warm rice lumber on the, on the, uh, on the frame when I did this, so a lot of the pavers have actually moved, roots have pushed them, but you know, it gives it kind of a, an old aged look. It doesn't bother me really, I'm you know, pretty happy with it. It's not a big deal, but for this, this had to be you know, pretty level, and I was concerned because some of these pavers, some are an eighth of an inch higher than the other ones, so uh, I called a couple hot tub companies around town, just to kind of picked their brain, and a lot of them said that you probably won't have an issue um, if you had, because this is not a fiberglass tub, because this is like a, a, uh, like a plastic tub, there is a little bit of a flexibility to it. And the bottom of this tub actually is made of plastic as well, where it does flex a little. Um, if, you had, if you had a hot tub that was actually made of uh, fiberglass, that surface would have to be super level because fiberglass, there is no give on fiberglass, so you don't want to crack the tub. So in my case, it's worked out perfectly. Um, if you have a situation like mine where, again, you want to make sure the ground is, is adequate, uh, but for my case, I wouldn't want to put a fiberglass tub down just because they're, they're more subject to, to cracking if the surface is not perfect. Uh, with this, I mean, the, sur the surface is almost perfect, but uh, it just worked out. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, if you guys have any other questions uh, regarding if, regarding uh, the delivery or the purchase or anything like that, you, uh, you guys know I'm always there to help you. Drop a comment. And, uh, man, I hope you, uh, hope you enjoy. I uh, hope you guys go ahead and get one. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Remember to click like and subscribe. And, as always, have a great day.